Good morning. We bring you greetings from the Morning Star Baptist Church. We come to share with you on this great Easter morning that we come to lift up the name of Jesus. For truly, he's worthy of all of our praise. He's worthy of all our glory. And we come to lift up his name on today. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let us bow together. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from the up above. God, we thank you, O God, for this Easter Sunday morning. God, the day in which we celebrate the life the death, the burial, but most importantly, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because had he not given a, risen from the dead, our life, our testimony, our salvation would be in vain. But, oh God, we come to shout hallelujah to your name today, oh God. We come to celebrate all that you have done for us. And, oh God, we give your name praise, oh God, as we enter into this worship experience. But truly, you are worthy of all of our praise. And we honor you with the fresh fruit of our lips. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Christ going to bless, bless us in the message of music. Thank you. 
God, it is once again that we are in humble submission, oh God, just thanking you again for the blessedness of this day. And oh God, uh, we thank you, oh God, for uh, this team of believers who, who have blessed us in music, oh God, and God, we pray your blessings upon them, oh God. And Master, now we uh, pray, oh God, that uh, your word will go forth and not return unto you, Lord. May it accomplish all that you set it forth to do. May it bring glory and honor to your name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Passage of scripture is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 9 through 14. Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 9 through 14. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. When she went and told them uh, that had been with him, as they mourned and wept, and as they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. And after that, he appeared in another form unto them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residents. Neither believed them, uh, neither they believed them. Uh, afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven as they said at meat and unbrowed them with their unbelief and hardness of, hardness of heart, because they believed not that which had seen him after he was risen. The grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For just a few minutes, you all, I want to talk about against all odds. Against all odds. We have before us this text, and uh, it, it takes us back to what had happened a few days before, uh, for Jesus uh, was taken uh, before Pontius Pilate. He was uh, given uh, a, a hurried trial, and, and uh, two men were on force that day, and uh, the crowd cried out, uh, give us Barabbas, and yet they cried, crucify Jesus. Oh, what a sad hour that was on that day. He that healed the sick and opened blinded eyes, he that made the lame to walk again, and, and many of them seen this, and yet they cried, give us the worst of this world, but crucify Jesus. And yet they take him, Jesus, and place him in, and the Bible says they cease to make fun of him, uh, for they not only whipped him, but they put a robe upon him and they put a crown of thorns upon his head. Listen, that night Jesus suffered humiliation, but he also suffered pain in, our, in his body. Yet the record is that Jesus never said a mumbling word. He allowed it to be so because Jesus would argue, no man takes away my life, but, but I give my life as a sacrifice for many. I don't know about you, but uh, Easter is a time of giving praise unto God for his ultimate sacrifice for your sins and my sins. And I'm going to suggest y'all uh, against all odds today because it was an early tragedy. Uh, because uh, the Bible says that as Jesus suffered with his disciples, uh, he went out to the garden to pray. And, and the Bible says that many of them that gathered there had fallen asleep while he prayed. And, and yet it seemed like all of a sudden all these bad things happened to Jesus. But I would argue, my brothers and sisters, it wasn't all of a sudden. It was according to God's will and God's timing. And this is and such a tragedy because they took Jesus and, and they uh, placed him, uh, uh, carried him up to the place of the skull that is later called Golgotha. And, and there they would put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And he would hang from that cross. 
This cross was not in the center of town, but it was on the outskirts of town where many of those who came back and they yelled obscenities to him, ye that saved men, come down and save thyself. But listen, I'm so glad this morning that Jesus stayed right where he was because he knew that one day John Johnson's sins would need to be forgiven. He stayed right there for all of our sins that they might be forgiven. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, there on the cross, he would ultimately die uh, before he would declare that, Father, into thy hands, commend thy spirit. And the Bible says that he gives up the ghost. And the Bible says that they tried to uh, uh, check to make sure that he died. And uh, they, they broke the legs of the other two uh, uh, passengers beside him. But the Bible says that when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. Bible says that they, uh, the centurion instead took a spear and speared him in his side, mm. and blood and water came streaming down. And the centurion would declare, "Surely this must be." <laughs> the old says, "This got to be the son of the living God." Thank God, y'all, for it was an early tragedy. But then, my brothers and sisters, I would argue that they took him down from that old cross and uh, 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 they placed him in a barber man's tomb because Jesus had no tomb. He had no place to lay his head. And, and yet, yet uh, Joseph would inquire of the tomb and give him a place that he may be buried because a Sabbath was coming and realized that, that they could not leave them upon the cross during the Sabbath holiday. So they, they took him down and, and they, they tried as fast as they could to wrap uh, ornaments around him, uh, all around his body. And they took uh, cloths and wrapped him. And, and not able to get it all finished, they did the best they could and the time they could. And they went and they placed him in the tomb. The word is that they placed him in the tomb, uh, but they also put soldiers at the tomb. They feared that his disciples would come and steal him during the night. So they not only put soldiers, a quintarian, uh, a number of soldiers, some 16, but they also wrote a song. <laughs> oh, help me somebody. When you seek to do evil, you won't pass anything to make your job uh, accomplished. They, they came and they rolled the stone in front of the tomb. The Bible says that, that early, uh, the third day morning, uh, different different uh, recorders uh, uh, argued how many they were, but we know all of them include Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb and uh, she, she's seeking uh, to what she will do and what she shall say when she gets to the tomb. But because she realized there are some problems when she makes it to the tomb, yeah. realizing that even on her way, she looks over on one scene and she sees the cross. And they are still there, but thank God Jesus is no longer there. Uh, the blood is still running down from the cross. They're, they're still there, but she makes her way not from, not just to the cross, but to the tomb. The Bible suggests uh, that she in her own mind was regulating how can I, what will I do when I get there? Because number one, there are soldiers there, and number two, there's a stone there. How can I do what I need to do? And the Bible says when she arrived at the tomb, Oh, blessed be God. This is what Easter is all about. She says that the tomb was empty. Listen, the soldiers that should have been there were there as dead men. They, they could not move. They could not speak. But the Bible says one of the other greatest things was that the stone had been rolled away. Oh, I want to have somebody to have this assurance. I don't care how, how strong the storm is of life. God has a way of handling your storms. Those situations that you see no way to make your way through. If you hold the God's unchanging hand, God will lead you right through it. The Bible says, the Bible says when, when Jesus told the disciples to go out on the water, and, and, and the Bible says in the middle of the night, Jesus came walking on the very water that was giving them problems. The Bible says when she makes it to the tomb, 
The stone had been rolled away, but the Bible says an angel sat on top of the stone. Oh, bless it be God. God will stand. God will walk. God will sit right on your problem. Angel sitting up there. The Bible, she says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? I know what you came looking for, but he is not here. He's risen from the dead. The Bible says that the angel rejoices in telling, uh, but as if she would not believe him, he gives her an opportunity that she may take a tour through the tomb. The Bible says as if one goes to the tomb, she saw uh, the cloth laid down in the tomb. And I want to suggest y'all, it wasn't just thrown on the floor, but Jesus was a carpenter. And whenever the carpenter finished his work, and when all have been done and he's satisfied, when he declared that the, that the piece of work was finished, he would fold up his cloth tower. Uh, and he would fold it in, in, in parcels and, and he would lay it upon the product. Jesus, when he finished his work at Calvary, Jesus, when he finished his work in the tomb, he folded up the napkin and laid it where his body lay to let the world know that it is finished. Jesus, 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 Jesus was not there in the tomb. And the Bible says that the angel minister to Mary and challenges her to go and tell the disciples. This was strange, y'all, because in that Jewish tradition, women were not used to declaring good news. They, uh, many men did not believe them. They would not receive that uh, word that came from a woman. But God in his divine providence, uh, he chose a woman to go and tell the good news that Jesus is alive. Yeah. I would argue this, my, this, my brothers and sisters, he declares this so that the world may know. But yet the disciples still did not believe him. Matter of fact, if you read John's rendition of the gospel, uh, John says that Peter and another disciples run out to see the tomb where Jesus was, and, 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 and the other disciple outruns Peter. But when they got to the tomb, it was Peter that declared, I'm not just going to stay outside. I need to see what's on the inside. Oh, he walks inside to see where it was. And the Bible says there was no Jesus. I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, it not happened just that day. But every day since then, there is no Jesus in the tomb. There is no Jesus on the cross. Why? Because he is risen from the dead. And my brothers and sisters, I would argue, my brothers and sisters, it leads us to a, a, a triumphant Easter, y'all. And that's what Easter is about. Easter ought to be about the good news. Yes, it was a tragedy on Friday, but God made something a new happen early Sunday morning. Yes, it was it was on the cross, and yes, at the cross he paid for my sins. But early Sunday morning, it's Easter, y'all. He, he now makes his position in the right hand of the Father. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the text says he rides from the grave with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And listen, y'all, I would argue not only was it a tragedy, not only was it an empty tomb, not only uh, was it a triumph, but I want to argue, y'all, it was transformation. Yeah. The Bible says that when Jesus revealed himself to Mary Magdalene, and you remember Mary Magdalene was different than all the other Marys uh, because she had had many devils and God cast the devils out of her. And if anybody knew Jesus, Mary Magdalene would. And, and the Bible says he ministers to her in the Gospel of John. And uh, he tells her, baby, you can't touch me right now. Uh, but there will come a day. He, he said, but I just want you to go and tell my disciples to meet me in Jerusalem. They were hiding in a place and they didn't want to be seen unless what happened to Jesus would one day happen to them. The Bible says that all the disciples were gathered together, all except Judas. And the Bible says that as they gathered there together, Jesus came walking in the room. I want to argue, y'all. Jesus doesn't have to have permission to come in the room. Jesus, the doctor, doesn't have to have permission to go in the room. Jesus 
says the lawyer in the court room doesn't have to have permission to come in the room. Jesus, the center of our worship, doesn't have to have permission. He makes his way in the room, and the Bible says all that were there saw him. But T. Thomas says, but, but Master, if it's really you, allow me to touch your hand. Pretense. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, thanks be to God that there are those that don't need to see his, his, his pierced hands to believe. And I would argue this, my brothers and sisters, if you ever come to see him, if you ever come to know him, your life will be transformed. And if Easter ever really comes to your heart, Listen, your life will be transformed. How do I know this, y'all? The Bible says that Jesus, that day, uh, on his way, he saw two brothers. And they were talking about what had happened in Jerusalem. They talked about what had gone on all week long. They talked about uh, his death and, uh, on the cross. They, they were talking all about what had happened. But they did not know what was ultimately going to happen when Jesus rose from the grave with all power, heaven and his earth. And the Bible says he talked to them on the Emmaus road. And they did not know who he was. That would argue, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says that finally, after they got to where they reasoned to be, they realized it was Jesus who, listen, I want to argue. The old saints say, he talks with me. He walks with me. He tells me I am his child. Every now and then, y'all, there's a transformation that going on in our hearts that God does so that he can reprove uh, reproduce Easter day after day after day in our lives. The question this morning is, have you sought him? Have you found him? I will trust this, y'all. Wherever you are, wherever you've been, whatever you do, you can break all the odds and you will find Jesus. Because the truth of the matter is, as you've been looking for him, he's been looking for you. And the problem, the, 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 the the power is, is that he already knows where you are. And he makes this, this right to me. He says that if you would acknowledge that you need a Savior, listen, if you recognize that he died while we were yet sinners, that we might be saved. If you would believe in your heart uh, that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says if you're willing to confess with your mouth, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. And wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this broadcast, I want to encourage you to trust him. Oh, and see won't he make your life brand new. But I, I would suggest this, y'all, that Jesus is not one to barge in. But if you will allow him to come in, he will come in and suck with you and make your 